Okay, you guys, this is problem number 16 from chapter 3 on voltage divider circuits. And in this problem, we have a 40 volt independent voltage source connected to a, um, an R1, which has no value. We're going to find the value, which is in series with an R2, which is in parallel with a load. Now, we need to find what R1, R2, and the load is given that the um, no load, when there is no load connected to it, the V out, or the, in this case the R2, because there is no load, is going to drop 8 volts. Um, and then also, we're going to constrain the value of the load to be greater than 3.6 kilo ohms. And also, the um, V out, when there is a load connected, that cannot drop below 7.5 volts. So. The way you're going to solve that is, of course, to use the definition of the voltage divider circuit, which says that um, when you have some two, two, when you have resistances connected in series, right, that the load or the voltage will drop directly in proportion with how much of the total resistance it is. For example, if this resistance, if R1 has 75% of the total resistance of R1 plus R2, then 75% of the load will drop, or the voltage will drop across R1. So it's a directly proportional relationship. And likewise, if you wanted 25% to drop, then you can design R1 and R2 such that R1 has 25% of the total resistance between R1 plus R2. And that's the concept of a voltage divider circuit. So the way we're going to solve this is to start with a no load constraint, which says that when there is no load, in other words, when the circuit looks like this, when it's just a straight voltage divider circuit, then 8 volts is going to drop here, which means 32 has to drop there. And remember what I said about a voltage divider circuit? The voltage drop is directly in proportional with the percentage of the resistance um, over the total resistance. So this means that R1, let's find, and we're going to do use that knowledge to solve for or to find a relationship between R1 and R2. So what I've just said is that let's take a look at the voltage drop here, the 32. Oops, yeah. Okay, so that's telling me that. The voltage drop across R1, which is 32 over 40, right, is going to be directly proportional to how much re resistance is across R1 and the total resistance of the series connection. So that is my relationship between R1 and R2 right there. And it's just algebra. You do cross multiplying to find a relationship between them. Excuse me, 40 R1 is equal to 32. R1 plus 32 R2. This will give me 8 R1 is equal to 32 R2, or R1 is equal to 4 R2, which um, is consistent with what we have here. So I'm saying that whatever R1 is, it's going to be 4 times R2. So if I take a look here, I have. Um, the voltage drop across here is eight, and then so across four, um, across across V1, I have four times the voltage drop, right? Because it has less resistance, so it's going to have more of the voltage drop. So that makes sense with what we we uh, with uh, what our numbers show. So we trust that number or this relationship. So let's put this over here because we need it. R1 is equal to four R2. Now, when there is a load connected to this, we have some constraints across it. Our constraints are that this has to be no less than 7.5 volts, and this has to be greater than 3600K, right? And so since these are the minimum constraints, we're going to find that condition, and then everything else is just going to have to be above, right? So let's uh, solve for this. First, we need to find the equivalent resistance. And once we find this equivalent resistance, we're going to use the concept of the voltage divider circuit 
in order to solve for it. Now notice that if this whole branch has to be 7.5, then this is now 32.5. Okay. So now let's find the equivalent resistance, right? R. So what I'm finding right now is this right here, R E Q. And I need that because I need to find this in uh, this proportion as a proportion of the total 40 volts. So R E Q gives me R2 in parallel with 3.6 K. And that's equal to R2, 36 K R2. over R2 plus 36K, 36K. That's REQ. Now, when I use the concept of, and you know what, I'm gonna redraw this circuit with this information. This is now, I'm gonna treat this as one resistor. This is its equivalent resistance. This is now 7.5 volts. And this is 3.6 or yeah, 3.6 KR2 over R2 plus 3.6 K. Okay, so this is telling me the voltage divider circuit says that this proportion of voltage is directly. This is going to be this is going to be a percentage of the total 40 volts, or 7.5 volts over 40, has got to be the same as the percentage of this as a total resistance. So it's going to be this 3.6 k plus r, oops, times r2. That's going to be over this plus this. That is actually a pretty, a lot uglier. We could also use this, start here, and then we'll have less messy algebra. So let's use this 32.5 volts over 40. That has to equal R1 over the total R1 plus, now this one here, 3.6K R2, R2 plus 3.6K. Still ugly, but not as ugly as before. So here is where the other relationship comes in. Because we have two equations and two unknowns. Now, I did erase it, but recall that we had R1 is equal to 4R2. Okay? So now we can replace this with 4R2. Now we have one equation and one unknown, and we can solve for it. Still not very pretty math. But Cross multiply, and this will give me on the easier side 160 R2 is equal to 35, 32.5 times 4. This gives me 130 R2. Oh dear, this is ugly. Okay, so then when we multiply this times this, then we multiply this times that. 3.6K times 32.5. This is going to give me 117K. One seventeen K R two 
over R2 plus 3.6K. Ooh, ugly, ugly. This is where we're at right now. Bring this over here, gives me 30R2 is equal to 117K R2, R2 plus 3.6K. Okay, cross multiply, or multiply both sides by R2 plus R1, gives me 30R2 times R2 plus 3.6K is equal to 117K R2. Okay, distribute this through, gives me 30R2 squared plus 30 times 600, 108. This is R2. R2. Bring this over here. So the two solutions for R2 is when R2 is zero, which means when there is a short circuit, and that's a trivial, <laughs> and that's a trivial situation. We don't care about when R2, when this is a short circuit. The other solution then is when R2 is equal to 300, and that's the one that we care about. So 300 ohms will satisfy the very minimum conditions. Now, when R2 is 300, R1 will be 1,200. And R load, we already know is 3,600. That's the minimum requirements. Okay? Now, the second part to asks us about power, what power rating. So, under our extreme conditions, we have a situation where R1 is 1,200, R2 is um, 300. Most of the power is going to be dissipated here, right? When these two are connected, they're going to actually dissipate 7.5 volts. So if we're going to rate power, we're going to rate it according to the where it drops the most. Remember, power is E. Power is equal to I squared R or V squared over R. And when we have 1,200, um, we have the maximum voltage that's going to drop given those constraints will be 32.5 volts so 32.5 volts 32.5 volts over r which is 1200 that's going to give you 880 milliwatts and we don't rate things by the milliwatts so you round up to one watt and that will be your power rating. That's it, you guys.